So, welcome all of you in the last one or two classes we have been discussing more about heteronuclear coordination ex correlation experiments extensively we discuss direct correlation experiment inverse correlation experiment like HSQC and how we do the experiment how the pulse sequence we understood where we transfer the magnetization from proton to carbon take back carbon to proton of course, I took the example of carbon it could be any dilute spin to any abundant spin does not matter any of the two abundant dilute spin you can consider for HSQC experiment. And of course, we also understood how to interpret the HSQC experiment varieties of experiments are possible proton coupled proton decoupled in either dimensions we took the example of how to interpret the coupled decoupled HSQC spectrum some hypothetical molecule where we could get 1 bond CH couplings and also long range proton proton couplings also possible. So, uh, we could get like uh, analogous to the if you take the coupled spectrum like in the proton spectrum you have a carbon 13 spectrum uh, proton carbon 13 satellites from the satellite spectrum you get HH coupling identically in the di uh, in the direct dimension in the proton dimension you get proton chemical sheets plus 1 bond CH and also HH couplings that was the coupled HH so in the decoupled version CH coupling will remove and we get only HH couplings. So, many such examples are available to interpret the spectrum and that we took a few example to say how we can interpret a realistic example of the molecules. But of course, in a crowded region what we can do is we can identify CH carbon, CH2 carbon, CH3 carbons based on the number of protons attached to carbon. How we do that? In the carbon 13 and number when we understood we also discuss about depth sequences depth 45, depth 90, depth 135 are the three experiments used to identify different carbons like carbon 13 editing we can do to identify different carbons. Dip 135 sequence if you join for this HSQC that is called met, that is called multiplicity edited HSQC wherein you can identify all CH2 carbons, carbons attached to 2 protons that is even number of protons they become negative in intensity whereas CH and CH3 carbons are positive in intensity. So, that we can find out from the looking at the sign and we also got the cross section to see they are really negative in peaks in the intensity power version and then positive for CH and CA3. And of course, the uh, example of the 3 heptanon, methyl heptanon and ethyl acetate we took to see how we can interpret the HSQC spectrum. So, we will continue with uh, from that prior, uh, now with another example one or two examples of uh, few more examples and then we will uh, see what are the other things we can do and few more details about HSQC we will try to understand. Of course, this we started also I discussed this this is the molecule which you analyze in the proton spectrum in the uh, uh, phenyl ring this will give only 2 protons are there which are 2 carbons attached to 2 protons they are from the proton spectrum which you analyze these are the 2 carb uh, protons and the carbon chemical shifts we can get and then uh, if you from this and then of course, from this you get carbon chemical shifts and proton chemicals we get like this. Of course, for the other rich, other phenyl group there are 4 protons and I wrote already 2 of them this we have analyzed once you know the analysis of the proton spectrum of the molecule containing phenyl groups and using that you can also assign HSQC spectrum and get carbon 13 satellites. But only thing you should see here in this molecule there are the different carbon 1, 2, 3 and 4 carbons which cannot give rise to any peaks in the HSQC because HSQC is only for directly bonded carbon proton one bond CHJC should be there. But how do you make sure we, how do you assign this type of carbons? that is the thing which we are going to discuss today in the after couple of slides. We will continue further we also discuss alpha and beta glucose mi mixture of two glucose are there in the D glucose we have alpha isomer and beta isomer in the range of 34 into 60 36 into 64 uh, 34 into 66 with the ratio that we saw that and of course, multiplicity edited we can see here we can get these are all red which are CH2 so rest are all CHS we can easily identify by doing this and of course, anomeric protons we all know these are the two things which you always we use this start the analysis of the uh, Cauchy spectrum also. So, starting with this of course, this is anomeric proton beta for the beta glucose and of course, this is the uh, carbon chemical shift and this is the proton chemical shift. Similarly, for anomeric proton of alpha and the expanded region of this one is taken here when you expand that basically what you should understand is proton 6 in this uh, has CH2s that is what we see red color here 
uh, even number of carbon. But you see, interesting thing is these two protons are non-equivalent. They are non-equivalent protons. Although carbon chemicals, they attach a single carbon. So if you see that, you very easily uh, you can identify. In fact, if you get a difficulty of which proton, whether 6A or 6B or whether it is alpha proton or alpha isomer or beta isomer, you can identify here. You simply go horizontally along this axis. Okay, This corresponds to alpha isomer and there are two protons here. This is the carbon 13 chemical shape. These are two proton chemicals from the center. If in the crowded region, just from the center you can identify the chemical shift here also. So, there is no confusion at all. Here also, if you see, this is the carbon chemical shift. Exactly from the center, you get pro proton chemical shift for both alpha, uh, the, uh, 6 a and 6 b of the beta isomer. This is the advantage. Same uh, carbon at two different protons are attached, but non-equivalent to different chemical shifts that easily you can assign by using HSQC like this. This is an advantage of that. Of course, same thing when you expand it, you can clearly see uh, for the alpha, for the proton 4 again alpha, beta when there is a crowded region very easily we can identify which is which. Okay, this is the extension of those things for alpha and beta isomers. All of them very easily you can start doing that. This is beta isomer, proton 2. This is carbon 13. Similarly, this is for 5, carb this is 2, alpha, all beta and alpha carbons. Protons we can get chemical shift also. Of course, from HSQC also you can get proton chemical shift. Since you already analyzed the Cauchy spectrum, very easily we can go and continue with this thing. Okay. With this, of course, HSQC spectrum is fairly easy to interpret like H the Hetkar experiment. There is no difference at all. One thing we one thing we may have to ask uh, answer the question. In a molecule, you have long range couplings. 2 bond CH, 3 bond CH also is there. But we observed only one bond correlation in HSQC, one, one JCH correlation. The question comes why 2 JCH and 3 JCH correlation peaks, cross peaks are absent in HSQC. If you have to answer that, first of all, we have to find out the cross peak intensity. I do not have to go into the mathematics of that and understand, discuss everything. It is all very lengthy mathematics, one can find out what is the cross peak intensity. The cross peak intensity is simply given by an expression like this alpha into sin squared pi by 2 star into j observed or j filtered. What is j observed is the actual j c h value. j filter is the value used for calculation of the mixing time. What is j filtered here? In our case, j filter is 1 bond is 1 j c h. Observed is usual. Okay. So, for j c filter is set for using 1 j c h as 135. But in the long range coupling, if I have to see in the what do what is JCH, long range coupling is of the order of 5 to 10 hertz. Sometimes 2 bond, 3 bond, if you want to see, let us say 4 hertz or 5 hertz will be there. What is the intensity of the cross peak of when the long range coupling is of the order of 4 hertz? Just plug this value into this equation. There is not, not a big mathematics. We have sine sin square pi by 2. J observed is the value which we are looking for. We are observing long range coupling and this is the filter we have set for 1 j, 135 hertz. That is some value I have chosen. It can be anything approximately around 140 to 150 hertz is what is normally chosen. Let us calculate the intensity of the cross peak due to long range coupling. First, j filter I use 135, j observed I use 4 hertz. I have plugged in the value sin squared pi by 2 into 4 divided by 135. This is the equation. See the equation here j observed or j filtered. So, observed is 4 hertz. I want to see why I am not seeing the cross peak if there is a long range coupling of 4 hertz in HSQC spectrum. 1 j ch is 135. Just use simple calculator, calculate this value, calculate what is this value of sin squared for this particular value. This value you can find out it is 2.6666 and sin squared value of that is 0 0.0022. What does it mean? The cross peak intensity is 0 0.0022 percentage with respect to JCH one by the filter what you have used. That is it is 0.2 percent intensity. If JCH peak is one bond coupling is of some intensity 1 let us say 
compared to that, the relative intensity of the observed peak for long range of 4 hertz is 0.2 percent. Hardly you can see that. That is the reason you will not be able to see that. You understand why one band coupling only are seen in HSQC? Why we are not seeing the long range coupling is because of this. Intensity, if you calculate for 4 hertz, it turns out to be 0.2 percent. Okay, you may say our 4 hertz, why it is not a realistic value? Let us take some other value, 8 or 10 hertz, 15 hertz, does not matter. We will see 8 hertz. Let us see it double the long range coupling. Instead of 4 hertz, I look for peak which is 8 hertz. Why I do not see that? We will feed the plug in this value, sin square pi by 2 star 8 over 135, and this is 5.33, and sin square of that is 0 0.0084. What does it mean? Intensity is 0.86 percent. Even then, you do not see. We are looking at carbon 13, remember? HSQC, we are seeing carbon 13 long range correlation. So, with proton, and this is such a small intensity, the cross peaks compared to the cross peak you get for 1JCH set of 135 hertz, you will not see that. If uh, cross peak for 1JCH is this size of this value in the area, and other one is this much. So, relatively, it is so weak, you do not see it. That is the reason why long range couplings are not seen in the HSQC experiment. Okay. So, the cross peaks are too difficult usually not seen because of this very low intensity. Of course, in some example I want to warn you, you can get long range JCH are also they are quite large because JCH in this molecule like this for example, in a phenyl group with C double bond CH you know 2 JCH here the nearly 50 hertz it is not 8 hertz. Now, plug in this value here and for in this molecule this carbon to this proton coupling is about 26 hertz that is too large. See 49.5 almost uh, more than one third of 135 hertz as a consequence they will give rise to peaks. In such examples long range correlations are also seen HSQC but with weak intensity. You can calculate what should be the intensity of that peak compared to 1 JCH. One it is reasonable value intensity in this case compared to previous example. So, these are all specific examples you may get long range correlations also. One may ask a question am I doing HSQC only for carbon 30? No, most of the time biomolecule people they were when they study protons I am sorry proteins, peptides etcetera they have molecules like this. For example, in the case of a tetrapeptide you have NH. I told you this correlations each amino acid has an NH group, we can get the nitrogen 15 proton, nitrogen 15 proton HSQC. Then you can identify chemical shift of the nitrogen you get and correlate those NH peaks to corresponding proton chemical shift. And uh, if you have a bigger molecule like protein, there will be n number of protons, so, huge complex uh, HSQC spectrum you are going to get and we can start interpreting each of them. And this is a simple example of this case, we are going to see 3 peaks are here and 3 NH peaks we are going to see here. Okay. Okay, this NH2 is there, this, there, this, 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 3 NHs are there and of course, this is also the one more, but we are seeing, of course, this may be overlapped here. These are two, three doublet, these two doublets are overlapped here. Okay, And if you take the projection of that, you will see that. And this is the projection of HSQC for the previous molecule. The spectrum was obtained in just one hour, remember, just one hour and we are going to get the signal. The same spectrum without HSQC, conventional way for 15 hours no signal, nothing is seen because nitrogen 15 is inherently very very low sensitive, very insensitive nuclei. So, you see you are not seeing any peak at all, this is the advantage of HSQC. So, HSQC what I want to summarize here is you are not only seeing carbon 13 proton HSQC, you can get nitrogen 15 proton HSQC also and especially in the nit biomolecules like peptides and proteins nitrogen 15 HSQC is conventional routinely used and you can see a reasonable intensity of the peaks in the cross peak and if you take the projection we will see very good, very good peaks with very good signature ratio compared to the direct observation of nitrogen 15. So, this is what I just wanted to tell you about a nitrogen 15 I mean carbon 13 proton nitrogen 15 HSQC you can take any other heteronuclei also no problem. So, the basically we understood how do you interpret the HSQC spectrum, why we do not see the cross peak in 
uh, HSQC, uh, especially for due to long range carbon proton and hydrogen proton couplings. So, we understood that and took a lot of examples to interpret everything. And the, we need to understand one other, another experiment called HMBC, heteronuclear multiple bond correlation. Multiple bond means not several at a time, Multi, two nuclei separated by multiple bonds that is what the convention meaning. So, multiple bond correlation we can use that advantage here is it is not only directly bonded long range coupling, it is remotely bonded that we can get. The, you see this is the very uh, immediate advantage is for example, directly one bonded carbon proton can be seen, but there is a let us say O here in between. This 1, 2, 3 bond separated 3 j c h is there reasonable, we can see that. And of course, there is a carbon or carbonyl carbon which is 2 bond separated and coupled to another proton somewhere let us say, can we see? There are long range couplings very well known in the carbon 13 NMR, we can observe long range CH coupling, these are all reasonable value ok. And then how do you detect such carbons? First of all the advantage of that is non protonated carbon which you do not see in HSQC can also utilize because of the long range coupling to different protons. So, salient points of HMBC what do we do when we want to do HMBC? First of all HMBC is usually acquired in magnitude mode, HSQC as I said is always acquired in phase sensitive mode very easy. And of course, HMBC because a magnitude mode, magnitude mode, mode node means real and imaginary will take some of the squares of these two and the square of that and get the intensity and no question of phase correction at all. In the HMBC spectra there is no need to do the phase correction because always it is recorded in the magnitude mode, this is one thing. Secondly, usually HMBC is acquired without decoupling, there is no need to do the decoupling here because long range coupling is there which is very weak and of course, there is no advantage of this there is no restriction the acquisition time you can acquire for a long time that is an advantage. So, it is a, it is always recorded without decoupling of course, you can do the decoupling there is nothing nobody can stop you, but generally it is done because of that with without decoupling. And here cross peaks are always split into doublets in the F2 dimension why? We are not doing decoupling. There is a long range one day, two, two j, three j, ch couplings will be there, which is of the order of eight to ten hertz. So it will be seen. Sometimes what happens? Long range coupling is very weak. You will broaden the signal. And for example, when a peak is a triplet in one day NMR, the cross peaks appear as doublets of triplets because one day coupling is here, cross peak, and in the one day NMR it is a triplet, and the cross peak will be triplet like this, doublets of a triplet. And another thing is remember HMBC is very very less sensitive than HSQC, why? Very easy you can understand. Remember in the long range I told you even during the toxic polarization transfer when I do I told you the mag mag polarization transfer efficiency is better if the coupling strength is larger. If the coupling strength become very very weak and remotely far, far away and very weak coupling magnetization transfer is efficiency is less. As obviously, if you go to 2 bond coupling copper carbon proton, 3 bond coupling carbon proton, their strengths are so small. As a consequence, the magnetization transfer takes enormous amount of time. It takes more time, not very fast. During that process what happens? Spins also start relaxing. There is a signal loss. When the spins relax, they go back to magnetization, magnetization go back to z axis. As a consequence, when they are detecting the signal in the xy plane, it is less sensitive, less signal is there. As a consequence, HMBC is less sensitive compared to HSQC because of the relaxation during long delays. HMBC usually requires twice as many scans as possible on the same sample. That means it is very, very signal averaging if you have to do, you have to acquire for more number of scans because signal and sensitivity is very very low. And generally this is the HMBC sequence, I told you HSQC sequence do not forget that we have HSQC sequence is polar inept sequence T1 period, in the T1 period you can apply 180 pulse for doing breaking the 
carbon proton coupling, reverse inept, detect the proton and decouple the carbon. You do not forget that, that is a sequence for inept. In the gen HMBC sequence is a different one. Look at it, it is a simple proton carbon. Here we have a filter called long range filter which is given a symbol delta L. This delta LR is tuned to detect correlation via small couplings. Here we deliberately have to suppress the one bond coupling remember we are uh, we have a long range correlation to, de to be detected. So, one bond correlation will be huge intensity we have to subtract that that is an important challenge here. So, we have a filter which is tuned to detect long range coupling and the rest of the thing is very simplest possible way it can be done this is a simple sequence and we detect the proton as I told you no decoupling always observed in a coupled manner. And of course, the same thing you can do by using what is called the pulse field gradients there is an advantage of that pulse field gradients. Okay, so, and when you apply the pulse field gradients like this remember I also told you this when we wanted to subtract the carbon 12 attached proton signal or nitrogen 14 attached proton signal in the HSQC sequence we can do two ways one is by phase cycling other is by field gradient that is what I told you. Same way you can also do with the pulse field gradient we can apply that this is the same experiment with the pulse field gradient version of that. What is the delta LR the long range delay that we have to use to see the correlation of the long range coupling. Remember long range coupling NJCH is very very small value set this delta LR equal to 1 over 2 times the long range delay approximately 100 millisecond will be the one for that is a small long range proton proton coupling to evolve about 5 hertz to 10 hertz 100 millisecond is the long range delay that filter delay we have to apply in the beginning of the pulse sequence this delay is essential. Then this magnetization at the spins due to long range coupling they will start evolving okay. And this during the LR period because it is a huge value remember 100 millisecond what is going to happen there are also proton proton couplings in the molecule that will also evolve because the strength of the proton proton coupling is almost equal to that of the long range coupling long range JCH is about 8 to 10 hertz what is the proton proton coupling around 10 to 15 hertz we saw similar magnitude as a consequence in the filter period LR in the HMBC in addition to long range CH couplings we also have proton proton coupling coming into the picture as a consequence the, the face of the peak get little bit disturbed distorted. So, this HMBC spectra because of this reason we always record in the magnitude mode please remember HSQC is always recorded in the phase density mode HMBC spectra are represented in the magnitude mode phase in phase information is last. And what is this low pass filter used for? Low pass filter it is going to pass the magnetization corresponding to the long range coupling, but prevent the evolution of one bond coupling the magnetization due to one bond coupling. So, it removes one bond correlation and allows only long range correlation and during LR this what happened the multiple of long range couplings also can evolve remember one more thing because if I say my LRI I set for 8 hertz if I take 80 hertz 80 hertz is 10 times 80 8 10 times 8. So, as a consequence what will happen during LR period multiples of long range coupling can also evolve. So, that is also possible and we have to suppress them by using low pass filter. Then this filter allow only those coupling that are smaller than the cutoff value anything above that it is going to prevent you understand in the remember in the long the filter that you are going to use in HMBC multiples of long range couplings can also evolve for example, long range couplings uh, is let us say of 8 hertz 18 to 10 if you take 80 hertz coupling if it is there correlation that also can evolve. So, we have to you have to suppress that by using low pass filter and then that low pass filter the advantage is it allows only those couplings that are smaller than the cutoff value set anything above that it is going to be removed. And this is why HMBC sequence 
generally we have two filters. One is a filter for the long range coupling for evolution, other one to prevent the long range evolution of this one bond couplings. So, that means we have two filters, one is called a J accept filter, other is J reject filter. What is that J accept? J accept is set to very small value 8 to 10 hertz, this is what we want to detect long range correlation. J reject is set to one bond couple, CH coupling, this is which we want to reject, stop it, do not allow it. See, if you know in physics, you would have understood low uh, no band pass filter and uh, you know uh, reject filter, something will be allowed, something will be stopped. Here we have two filters, one to pass the coupling correlations coming because of long range correlations, long range coupling, uh, one to stop the correlation coming because of directly bonded one bond proton correlation that coupling of the order of 135 and the J reject is used to remove correlations of 1 J CH. These are all called HSQC cross peaks. You know that HSQC cross peaks is because of 1 J CH. That HSQC cross peaks are to be suppressed. So, J reject will suppress the HSQC cross peaks, will allow only long range correlations. And this is the basic low pass filter that we use, okay. And this is the usual sequence and we have in between the low pass filter is put in such a way, first carbon 13 pulse creates multiple quantum coherence. That is for 1 JCH only, delta 1 is set for 1 JCH, this filter. LR is for long range, delta 1 is for 1 bond. So, this one delta 1 is set for 1 JCH to as a low pass filter and what will happen and this creates multiple quantum only for 1 bond CH because this is calculated for that value. And this delay is very short compared to long range. Remember delta LR when we calculated it is of the order of 100 millisecond. This is much smaller because it is a large coupling. As a consequence in this delay short delay NJCH will not evolve. That is how low pass filter will filter this thing. Okay. The filter element is placed at the start of the HMPC sequence prior to the transfer of polarization onto carbon. That is the filter sequence between that is what we saw in the sequence. Then we do two experiments. One experiment with the sign of the first carbon 13 pulse plus x, other is minus x. And sign of the phase receiver phase is always kept unchanged. This is an experiment we do. And then what we do is do the addition of both the data. When you remove that, one bond correlations are suppressed. You remember how do we do the how do we do the suppression of one bond JC correlation HMPC? In this, we have a filter here. We set the value for the filter for long range coupling and do two experiment. And uh, in the first carbon 13 pulse here, here a carbon 13 pulse plus x and minus x is there. First, once you do plus x second time you do minus x and then do the two experiment keep the receiver phase constant both the times after both the experiment do the co-addition of the data. When you do the co-addition of the data one bond JCH correlations are suppressed that will removed and then we are going to detect only long range correlations this is what normally is done. But of course, there are always difficulties in the experiment when you do, there will be always some leakage, some you know signals will not be very good, some distortions will be there, imperfections will be there. As a consequence, there are certain difficulties, certain complications will be there in any experiment. This one can improve it, we can keep on improving the sequences, so that we can get better and better correlations. One of the improved sequences is what is called a Bird X sequence. Bird sequence is bilinear rotation decoupling. Bird means bilinear rotation decoupling pulse. It is alternate to low pass filter. Instead of doing a low pass filter, we can use a bird sequence. What is this bird sequence does? I will explain to you in a short way, it's very simple way. Bird element, this is called a bird element. Bird element, we have a proton pulse. 90 pulse with a delay proton 180, delay proton 90 and then 
at the same time carbon 13 channel when the proton 190 is applied carbon 190 is also applied and the delay in both the cases is set to 1 by jch this is how the bulled element is used but how does this bulled work how does it do the filtering we will see this thing the vector picture of the bulled element will understand for example there are two types of carbons in any molecule one carbon 12 attached for the carbon attached to proton other is carbon 13 attached to proton when you put the both sample in a magnetic field in both the cases magnetization will be along z axis both carbon 12 attached to proton carbon 13 attached to pro proton or along z axis as soon as you put the sample in a magnetic field this is what happens apply 90 degree x pulse on proton then what happen proton attached to carbon 12 will come to this similarly proton attached to carbon 13 also will come to 90 degree because of 90 degree pulse come to y axis give a delay of 1, one hour jch here the trick comes what happens this magnetization moves start moving by a certain angle we know how much it moves we, we know how to calculate also uh, theta is equal to how much it moves how much it precise is given by theta is equal to pi into delay into that we know d into j that we know that so we uh, at the apply this and if you see that this start moving like this it is single component vector there is no j coupling carbon 12 will not couple to proton so carbon 12 spin is 0 so it is still a single only keeps processing evolves on the on its chemical shifts whereas carbon 13 attached to proton is a doublet this antifaz doublet will be created after certain delay then continue further immediately when apply 180 pulse the 180 pulse takes the magnetization which was here to this axis and then continue to process in the same direction like here it was going like this it continued to process but whereas this antiphase remains same that nothing will happen and uh, what will happen is give another delay after 180 pulse this carbon 12 magnetization gets focused refocused along y axis completely gets refocused there is no chemical shift evolution similarly carbon 13 vector what will happen if you apply and uh, give a delay this in, uh, these vectors you know start moving in the opposite direction and they refocus along minus y see the difference carbon 12 magnetization at proton magnetization attached to carbon 12 will be refocus along plus y whereas carbon 13 attached refocus along minus y and if you, you, know, you apply 90 degree pulse this will come to minus z axis whereas this will go to plus z axis what is going to happen now see this now the advantage is effect of the bird element the selective inversion of the carbon 12 pro, pro, signal see carbon 12 attached proton signal is selectively inverted carbon 13 we did not invert but we inverted only carbon 13 selectively attached carbon 12 proton so proton chemical shift evolution refocus heteronuclear one bond coupling evolve throughout this is what happens and for carbon 13 attached to proton chemical shift will refocus and after a total two delay the blood vector come back to z axis by the final proton pulse we can start detecting okay and for for carbon 13 spin but it has no effect only carbon 12 attached proton it gets inverted so with this i tell you I told you how the bulb works and everything i am going to stop here and we will continue with the analysis of the bulb sequence and few more HMBCC expect everything in the next class. But this class we understood something about what a HMBC pulse sequence after completing the HSQC why the signal intensity is very weak everything we understood for especially uh, for the long range correlation why we do not evolve they will not be seen because of this intensity calculation it is very small so we do not see it whereas in the case of HMBC we understood the pulse sequence is there we suppress the one bond and detect the long range correlations for that we have a fil two filters j accept and j reject j accept will allow 
correlation coming back as a long range car couplings, J reject will reject the one bond correlation signal. How do we reject that? There are several ways. We can do the experiment with plus x minus x by cycling or with the false field gradient experiment is also there. And also we can use different filters for doing this. One of them is a bird sequence. I explained to you what is a bird sequence. Bird will have a selective inversion for the protons attached to carbon 12, but protons attached to carbon 13 it has no effect. Then how we can use this in HMBC, how it can be utilized we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.